importance of consciousness. So a monk abides contemplating mind objects as mind objects internally and he abides detached, not grasping at anything in the world. And that, monks, is how a monk abides contemplating mind objects as mind objects in respect of the five aggregates of grasping. 3. The six internal and external sense bases. Buddha, again a monk abides contemplating mind objects as mind objects in respect of the six internal and external sense bases. Here a monk knows the eye, knows visible objects and he knows whatever fetter arises dependent on the two. He knows how an unarisen fetter comes to arise, he knows how the abandonment of an arisen fetter comes about and he knows how the non-arising of the abandoned fetter in the future will come about. He knows the ear and knows sounds. He knows the nose and knows smells. He knows the tongue and knows tastes. He knows the body and knows tangibles. He knows the mind and knows mind objects and he knows whatever fetter arises dependent on the two, how an unarisen fetter comes to arise he knows how the abandonment of an arisen fetter comes about and he knows how the non-arising of the abandoned fetter in the future will come about. So he abides contemplating mind objects as mind objects internally and externally, he abides detached, not grasping at anything in the world. That monks, is how a monk abides I contemplating. Mind objects as mind objects in respect of the six internal and external sense bases. For the seven factors of enlightenment Buddha, again a monk abides contemplating mind objects as mind objects in respect of the seven factors of enlightenment. Here, monks, if the enlightenment factor of mindfulness is present in himself, a monk knows that it is present. If the enlightenment factor of mindfulness is absent in himself, he knows that it is absent. He knows how the unerasen enlightenment factor of mindfulness comes to arise, he knows how the complete development of the enlightenment factor of mindfulness comes about. He knows if the enlightenment factor of investigation of states is present in himself. He knows if the enlightenment factor of energy is present in himself. He knows if the enlightenment factor of delight is present in himself. He knows if the enlightenment factor of tranquility is present in himself. He knows if the enlightenment factor of concentration is present in himself. If the enlightenment factor of equanimity is present in himself, a monk knows that it is present. If the enlightenment factor of equanimity is absent in himself, he knows that it is absent. He knows how the unerasen enlightenment factor of equanimity comes to arise and he knows how the complete development of the enlightenment factor of equanimity comes about. So he abides contemplating mind objects as mind objects internally and externally. He abides detached, not grasping at anything in the world. And that, monks, is how a monk abides contemplating mind objects as mind objects in respect of the seven factors of enlightenment. 5. The Four Noble Truths Buddha, again, monks, a monk abides contemplating mind objects as mind objects in respect of the Four Noble Truths. Here, a monk knows as it really is, this is suffering, this is the origin of suffering, this is the cessation of suffering, this is the way of practice leading to the cessation of suffering. What, monks, is the noble truth of suffering? Birth is suffering, aging is suffering, death is suffering, sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness and distress are suffering. Being attached to the unloved is suffering, being separated from the loved is suffering, not getting what one wants is suffering. In short, the five aggregates of grasping are suffering. What is birth? The coming into existence, the complete origination, the conception, the arising up in new form, the appearance of the aggregates, the acquisition of the sense bases of various beings in various categories, this, monks, is called birth. What is aging? The process of aging, the decrepitude, the decay and loss of teeth, the graying of hair, the wrinkling of skin, the failing of the life force, the wearing out of the sense faculties such as sight of various beings in various categories, this, monks, is called aging. What is death? The falling away from existence, the passing away from existence, the dissolution, the disappearance, the end of life, 
the passing away due to completion of the lifespan, the breaking up of the aggregates, the discarding of the body, the destruction of the life faculty of various beings in various categories, this, Pikhas, is called death. What is sorrow? Whenever, by any kind of misfortune, anyone is affected by something of a painful nature, sorrow, mourning, distress, inward grief, inward woe, that, monks, is called sorrow. What is lamentation? Whenever, by any kind of misfortune, anyone is affected by something of a painful nature and there is crying out, lamenting, making much noise for grief, making great lamentation, that, monks, is called lamentation. What is pain? Whatever bodily painful feeling, bodily unpleasant feeling, painful or unpleasant feeling results from bodily contact, that, monks, is called pain. What is sadness? Whatever mental painful feeling, mental unpleasant feeling, painful or unpleasant sensation results from mental contact, that, monks, is called sadness. What is distress? The mental pain and mental unpleasantness, the painful and unpleasant. Feeling produced by contact of the mind, this, pikhas, is called distress. What, monks, is being attached to the unloved? Here, whoever has unwanted, disliked, unpleasant sight objects, sounds, smells, tastes, tangibles or mind objects, or whoever encounters ill-wishers, wishers of harm, of discomfort, of insecurity, with whom they have concourse, intercourse, connection, union, that, monks, is called being attached to the unloved. What is being separated from the loved? Here whoever has what is wanted, liked, pleasant sight objects, sounds, smells, tastes, tangibles or mind objects, or whoever encounters well-wishers, wishers of good, of comfort, of security, family members or friends or colleagues and then is deprived of such concourse, intercourse, connection, or union, that, monks, is called being separated from the loved. What is not getting what one wants? Those subjected to rebirth, wishing not to be born again. But this cannot be gained by wishing. That is not getting what one wants. In being subject to aging, to to death, to sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness, and distress, they wish that they can evade such situations but this cannot be gained by wishing. That is not getting what one wants. How monks, in short, are the five aggregates of grasping suffering? They are grasping of form, grasping of feelings, grasping of perception, grasping of mental formations, grasping of consciousness. These are in short the five aggregates of grasping that are suffering. That, monks, is called the noble truth of suffering. What monks is the noble truth of the origin of suffering? It is craving that gives rise to rebirth, bound up with pleasure and lust, finding fresh delight now here, now there. The three cravings are sensual craving, craving for existence and craving for non-existence. Where does this craving arise and establish itself? Wherever in the world there is anything agreeable and pleasurable, craving arises. When the eye sees something desirable, when the ear hears something delightful, when the nose smells something fragrant, when the tongue tastes something delicious, when the body touches something tangible and when the mind thinks of something agreeable and pleasurable, then craving arises and establishes itself. Sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tangibles, mind objects in the world are agreeable and pleasurable and there this craving arises and establishes itself. Then the correspondent eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, tongue consciousness, body consciousness, mind conscious. Ness in the world is agreeable and pleasurable, and there this craving arises and establishes itself. When the correspondent eye contact, ear contact, nose contact, tongue contact, body contact, and mind contact in the world is agreeable and pleasurable then craving arises and establishes itself. From contact, feeling arises, feeling born of eye contact, ear contact, nose contact, tongue contact, body contact, mind contact the world is agreeable and pleasurable, 
and there this craving arises and establishes itself. The perception of sights, of sounds, of smells, of tastes, of tangibles, of mind objects in the world is agreeable and pleasurable, and there this craving arises and establishes itself. Volition in regard to sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tangibles, mind objects in the world is agreeable and pleasurable, and there this craving arises and establishes itself. The craving for sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tangibles, mind objects that are pleasurable give rise to this craving. Thinking of sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tangibles, mind objects that are pleasurable give rise to this craving. Wondering on sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tangibles and mind objects that are pleasurable give rise to this craving. That monks, is called the noble truth of the origin of suffering. What monks, is the noble truth of the cessation of suffering. It is the complete cessation and extinction of this craving, its forsaking and abandonment, liberation from it and detachment from it. How does this craving come to be abandoned and how does cessation come about? Wherever in the world there is anything agreeable and pleasurable, their cessation comes about. What is there in the world that is agreeable and pleasurable? The eye has the characteristic of being delightful and pleasurable. When this craving is abandoned, it is abandoned there, when it ceases, it ceases there. Similarly for the ear, the nose, the tongue, the body, and the mind. Eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, tongue consciousness, body consciousness, mind consciousness in the world is agreeable and pleasurable and there this craving comes to be abandoned, there its cessation comes about. Sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tangibles, mind objects in the world are agreeable and pleasurable, and there this craving comes to be abandoned, there its cessation comes about. Eye contact, ear contact, nose contact, tongue contact, body contact, mind contact, the perception of sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tangibles, mind objects, volition in regard to sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tangibles, mind objects, craving for sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tangibles, mind objects, thinking of sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tangibles, mind objects, pondering on sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tangibles and mind objects in the world is agreeable and pleasurable, and there this craving comes to an end, there its cessation comes about. That monks, is called the noble truth of the cessation of suffering. What monks, is the noble truth of the way of the path leading to the cessation of suffering? It is the noble eightfold path, namely, right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness and right concentration. What is right view? It is the understanding of the knowledge of suffering, the knowledge of the origin of suffering, the knowledge of the cessation of suffering, and the knowledge of the way of practice leading to the cessation of suffering, four noble truths. What is right thought? It is the thoughts of renunciation, the thought of non-ill will, the thought of harmlessness. What is right speech? It is refraining from lying, refraining from slander, refraining from harsh speech, refraining from frivolous speech. What is right action? It is refraining from taking life, refraining from taking what is not given. Refraining from sexual misconduct, precepts. What is right livelihood? Here, the Aryan disciple having given up wrong livelihood, keeps himself by right livelihood. What, monks is right effort? Here, a monk rouses his will, makes an effort, stirs up energy, exerts his mind and strives to prevent the arising of unerous and evil unwholesome mental states. He rouses his will and strives to overcome evil unwholesome mental states that have arisen. He rouses his will and strives to produce unerous and wholesome mental states. He rouses his will, makes an effort, stirs up energy, exerts his mind and strives to maintain wholesome mental states that have arisen and not letting them fade away, 
to bring them to greater growth, to the full perfection of development. What monks is right mindfulness? Here, monks, a monk abides contemplating body as body, ardent, clearly aware and mindful, having put aside hankering and fretting for the world, he abides contemplating feelings as feelings, he abides contemplating mind as mind, he abides contemplating mind objects as mind objects, ardent, clearly aware and mindful, having put aside hankering and fretting for the world. What, monks, is right concentration? Here a monk, detached from sense desires, detached from unwholesome mental states, enters and remains in the first jhana, which is with thinking and pondering, born of detachment, filled with delight and joy. Then with the subsiding of thinking and pondering, by gaining inner tranquility and oneness of mind, he enters and remains in the second jhana, which is without thinking and pondering, born of concentration, filled with delight and joy. Then with the fading away of delight, remaining imperturbable, mindful and clearly aware, he experiences in himself the joy of which the noble ones say, happy is he who dwells with equanimity and mindfulness, he enters the third yohana. Then having given up pleasure and pain and with the disappearance of former gladness and sadness, he enters and remains in the fourth yohana, which is beyond pleasure and pain and purified by equanimity and mindfulness. This is called right concentration. And that, monks, is called the path leading to the cessation of suffering. So he abides contemplating mind objects as mind objects internally, contemplating mind objects as mind objects externally, contemplating mind objects as mind objects both internally and externally. He abides contemplating arising and cessation of phenomena in mind objects. Or else, mindfulness that there are mind objects is present just to the extent necessary for knowledge and awareness and he abides detached, not grasping at anything in the world. That monks, is how a monk abides contemplating mind objects as mind objects in respect of the Four Noble Truths. Buddha concluded, whoever, monks, should practice these four foundations of mindfulness for just seven years may expect one of two results, either era and ship in this life or if there should be some substrate left they can achieve the state of a non-returner let alone seven years if they practice for just six years five years point four years point three years two years one year seven months six months five months four months three months two months one month half a month may expect one of two results either era and ship in this life or if there should be some substrate left the state of a non-returner there is monks this one way to the purification of beings, for the overcoming of sorrow and distress, for the disappearance of pain and sadness, for the gaining of the right path, for the realization of Nibbana, that is the four foundations of mindfulness and it is for this reason that it was said. After this discourse by Buddha, the monks rejoiced and were delighted at his words. In summary, Buddha explained the foundations of mindfulness by discussing the contemplation of body, contemplation of feelings, contemplation of the mind and contemplation of mind objects. Those who practice diligently on these foundations of mindfulness meditation will achieve the fruits of enlightenment one day when practiced correctly. References <laughs>